Gentlemen, and welcome to the Pentagon Force Protection Agency's new officer ceremony. Today, we were going to recognize the newest Pentagon police officers by swearing them in and then presenting them with their credentials. We first would like to extend a special PFP welcome to all our families and friends who are joining us here today on this significant occasion. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the arrival of the official party, which will be followed by the national anthem by Sergeant Anthony Breck and the invocation delivered by Chaplain Harry Byrd. Today's procession will be led by Piper Michael McLean of the City of Alexandria Pipes and Drums. Piper McLean, the Pentagon Force Protection Agency, thanks you for your time and your talents. Piper McLean, take your post, sir. And bright stars through the perilous fight, or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets red glare, the bombs bursting in. That our flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star spangled banner yet wave? Or the land of the Let us pray. Source of all wisdom and learning, we ask that you give your blessing on these men and women who have worked many difficult weeks and months and have given so much of themselves to arrive at this moment. We rejoice with these graduates on this special day of achievement and celebration. We thank you for their families and the sacrifices they have made to make this day possible. We ask that you would give them joy as the fruit of their labor. We also ask that you give their leaders and instructors a sense of accomplishment for their faithful and dedicated service. For these new officers, we pray that you be their constant companion as they now take on the awesome responsibility of vigilance and protection. 
Keep them always aware of the high honor and trust placed on them by our nation. And grant also to the spouses and families of these men and women your blessing as they stand by their spouses, their parents, their sons and daughters, supporting and encouraging them in their honored task. In your name we pray, amen. Please be seated. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Lieutenant Will Smith of the Operations Division, and it is my pleasure this morning to welcome you to this new officer ceremony. And the first thing we'd like to do is introduce the official party, the director of the Pentagon Force Protection Agency, Mr. Chris Bargery. Our Chief of Police, Woodrow G. Cousset. And Deputy Chief, Michael Gary. A special welcome to the rest of our PFP leadership, beginning with the Deputy Performance Improvement Officer and Evaluation Officer of DOD, Dr. Savannah Rubin Rubino Hallman. Our Deputy Director of PFPA, Mr. Lewis Ratchford. Executive Director for Law Enforcement, Ms. Shelley Verdejo. And Executive Director for Security Integration and Technology, Dr. James Day. On May 3rd, 2002, in response to the September 11th terrorist attacks against the Pentagon and the subsequent anthrax incidents, Deputy Secretary of Defense Paul Wolfowitz established the Pentagon Force Protection Agency. Since its creation, PFPA has expanded its law enforcement mission to provide force protection against a full spectrum of potential threats. Our duties include law enforcement, crisis prevention, counterintelligence, anti-terrorism, and operational security and surveillance. Under the direction of Mr. Bargery, the agency stands as one of the nation's premier federal law enforcement organizations with the motto, protecting those who protect our nation. We will now open the event with an address from our director, Mr. Bargery. Good morning. Uh, first of all, I want to welcome you, uh, family, friends, um, new officers, uh, staff team at large. Uh, it's great to have such a large crowd here in the Pentagon. Um, you know, we love these ceremonies. Uh, these are very, very special events. They're special events in the lives of all concerned here, especially these new officers who uh, are about to swear an oath and live and serve by a creed that very few in our nation's population understand, live by, know, or serve by. Uh, and so we are here to honor them today. You know, we are a pretty serious bunch. Uh, we, uh, we're often, we often put on a serious face to what we do, uh, but there are times when we're not as serious. There are times that are absolutely built for celebration, and this is one of those times. So I want everyone in here today to know that this occasion, this event is for you. This is an event to be celebrated, and we want you to celebrate. So you may have been in the Pentagon dozens of times or hundreds of times, or this may be your very first time. But I assure you, it's your house, uh, your tax dollars pay for this place, and they pay our salaries. Uh, so we are here to serve you, and we welcome you, and we're glad you're here. Today is a day to celebrate, so loosen up, cheer, let the kids run around. If the kids misbehave, that's fine. If the kids cry or yell, that's fine. If you can't find your kid, it's probably okay. There may be a police officer nearby. <laughs> So don't worry. Uh, okay, the doors are closed and this is our house. This is our place for the moment and we are all family, okay? 
All right, I'm glad you're here. Um, we're going to celebrate three, three things today. First and foremost, we are going to celebrate the achievement of the substantial achievement of these men and women. And we're going to talk about that. And we're going to celebrate our nation, this nation that we all serve. And whether you have served or never served, guess what? You're serving now because uh, we're all in this together. And so we're going to celebrate that as well. And last but not least, we're going to celebrate family. Uh, I said I welcome you as family. Get, we are certainly family at this moment. So again, welcome. First of all, to our police officers. Uh, I want to tell you this, this road, this long journey, this career path that you've chosen, it is, it is not for the faint of heart. It is, it is not easy. Actually, serving as a police officer or serving in the U.S. military is perhaps not the most popular job to choose. It's hard. It's hard. It takes a special person to make that commitment. It takes a lot of hard work. It takes a lot of, uh, you get a lot of hard critiques. Uh, and those critiques are just beginning. Uh, you know, uh, you will be put, you have been put, and you will be put in lots of tough situations uh, that will test you. Uh, it will test your personal ability, test your abilities as a teammate, and uh, test your abilities to, in the right moment, show compassion, uh, and in the right moment, show leadership, and in the right moment, show the sterner stuff that it takes to protect and serve the public and the mission that we all swear an oath to protect and serve. And last but not least, you choose a career that inevitably uh, puts you in some form of risk every day, uh, in harm's way, so to speak. As you stand between those forces that would do harm and the good people that serve this great nation, uh, both in this building and across the entire DOD enterprise and the National Capital Region across Maryland, D.C., Virginia, and even in Pennsylvania, where I know some of you are destined to go and serve. It's a long road. The training is hard. Uh, the training will continue. Uh, and you've done well to get where you are. You have earned this moment. Uh, and I just want to acknowledge you. You know, a lot of people serve a lot of different things, especially in this day and time. People serve money. People serve um, uh, themselves. Uh, people serve various causes uh, that, they, that they choose. Uh, a lot of people serve a particular business. Uh, we all choose uh, a path and we choose how we spend our time and, and how we commit our energy and, uh, and our lives. Uh, but I think what is unique and important about what you guys have chosen to do is that you have chosen to serve people and you have chosen to serve all the people. You've chosen, chosen to serve those that agree with you and those that don't agree with you those that like you and those that don't like you, and people you've never even met before, you are serving every day that you get up and you come in and you put that uniform on and you protect and serve in this vital job and in this important job. And again, you live by an oath that you will take today and you are guided by a creed uh, that takes you down this path of how you serve. And I commend you and I thank you for the job that you're doing. Uh, second of all, I want to talk about our nation. Let's celebrate this great nation. I mean, look around this room. Look at the people. Look at the people that make up this nation. We're all represented in here. Uh, we are made up of uh, a diverse groups, diverse groups of people that come together under one unifying cause one unifying cause in this room. And in here, it's to serve this great nation and to serve this mission that, uh, that these men and women have signed up to, to do. Um, 
you're going to hear a little bit about each of these officers today, and I just encourage you to, to listen to uh, all the various backgrounds and experiences that come together to make up even just one class, this class, one class of what makes up our force and our great agency. Uh, and, uh, and I think you'll be impressed. I'll tell you that we continue to bring in very high achieving, high quality people to serve in this agency. And I am super proud to bring you guys on board today. Um, but I'll tell you this, um, this agency and uh, Lieutenant Smith gave you just a, a peek uh, behind the curtain of who we are and what we do. Uh, we're a unique organization uh, specifically conceived and specifically built for a national security mission of the highest order. Uh, born out of the 9-11 attacks, uh, this organization, this agency, is the new model. It's the new post-9-11 model. We're unique and specially built for what we do. Uh, in this, you're not alone. And I'll share with everyone, think about this for a moment. These officers join a line of over a thousand uh, great Americans that are under arms and commissioned uh, in what is arguably the most important city in the world, in the greatest nation that the world has ever known, uh, serving to protect uh, the greatest Department of Defense and the greatest military force that has ever existed. And why do we do that? We do that not just to make sure we can operate here, but to promote freedom, to keep people free in this country and in other countries. And we don't do it alone in the Pentagon Force Protection Agency. Here in this region, we are teamed with numerous organizations that are not exactly like us, but similar. Uh, some of those, the, the U.S. Secret Service, the U.S. Capitol Police, the U.S. Park Police, uh, all the various state and local jurisdictions that uh, we serve with, and then of course the Department of Defense and the way it's organized. Uh, we're all of those. And we join this great team to serve the nation here in this place. Uh, and it's a hard place to serve, but it's a very rewarding mission and place to serve. And this agency, I will share with you, is not just serving DOD interests here. But I'll tell you that just to give you a, uh, uh, a snapshot of places where we are, we have uh, Pentagon Force Protection Agency personnel in this month and next month serving in numerous locations around the world, uh, all across the United States, uh, across uh, Europe, Asia, uh, transiting worldwide to make sure that the Pentagon Force Protection Agency mission goes on. Uh, so, you know, make sure your passports are ready as well, in case we need to move. Um, but we have many, many capabilities, but in the many capabilities that make up our agency, uh, you, you officers, you are the front line of what we do. You are the key to our ability to operate. You are our main effort. And I, we need you and we want you to know that. So thank you. Last but not least, we wanna celebrate family. Um, these officers are a part of this family and as I mentioned, all of you who are here to support them today, you're part of our family too. And I want you to know that we appreciate you being here much more, more than you can understand because not only do we need you as part of our team, but they will continue to need your support. Thank you for supporting them to get this far in this journey, this noble work that they're going to do, and this tough journey that they have chosen and made it to this great achievement. Thank you, and please know that they will continue to need your love and support all the way through. So I thank you ahead of time for, um, for that and how you will continue to support them. So ladies and gentlemen, again, um, please 
make this place your home for this event. Cheer, um, hug people. We're going to be uh, set up for you to come up and take pictures at the end of all of this today. Uh, we'll leave everything in place so you can come up and take pictures. We know that's going to take a little while. You're going to want to take some photos with your people. And we encourage you to do that at the end of this uh, ceremony today. Um, but for right now, I need to get off stage because uh, the chief of police uh, it very much wants to uh, get these officers sworn in uh, and get them online and doing their duty today. So ladies and gentlemen, once again, welcome. Thank you for being here. And uh, uh, new officers, congratulations. Thank you, sir. As an agency, we recognize the importance of challenging our officers to be their best. During their training, all PFPA recruits are evaluated on professional appearance and bearing, responsibility and accountability, leadership, initiative, their communication skills, and their technical and tactical weapons proficiency. The training is both challenging and competitive and sometimes enduring, it takes up to six months. The Director's Award is presented to the graduate who demonstrates high performance in leadership and law enforcement skills during this challenging training evolution. And at this time, I'd like to invite Deputy Chief Michael Gary of the National Capital Region. And I ask Officer Branos to please join him on stage. The Director's Leadership Award is presented to Mina Brenos, who, during agency-specific basic training, exhibited impressive leadership, skill, and teamwork. Her performance was outstanding and indicative of the characteristics we seek in all of our Pentagon police officers. She has been nominated by her peers and was selected by the training division as the top graduate. Signed, Chris Bargery, Director, Pentagon Force Protection Agency. Thank you, Chief Gary and Officer Branos. The floor is yours. Good morning, everyone. How are you? I'd like to start off by thanking the Pentagon Force Protection Agency for making today's graduation possible. And for those who traveled and took time off to attend our graduation, and to those who are watching the ceremony virtually, thank you for supporting us. 0.2% of the United States population are sworn police officers. In recent years, many agencies have had to increase their hiring programs to meet staffing needs. But how does one create a police officer? Actually, I guess my question is, how do you create an outstanding police officer? Behind the scenes, it takes an enormous effort to identify individuals capable of passing law enforcement training and those driven to serve their country. I reflected on our law enforcement training experience and the ingredients necessary to produce this fine class. I was able to narrow it down to four components. The first is the dedicated PFPA staff. The police training program is like entering a new world for those without a background in policing. I had no experience in weapons training. I knew that entering this world, like many of us, required I take a leap of faith and trust in my leadership. That moment for me began when I met Miss Spain. She told me to be courageous. She said, Mina, be strong, be courageous. <laughs> and tackle every challenge. Not because I should, but because policing is a privilege as much as it is a responsibility. And in fact, we are responsible for going above and beyond in our training to master weaponly, weaponry, law, first aid, among other skills, to be the ones who actually run toward danger. Director Bargery, Deputy Director Ratchford, Ms. Verdejo, Dr. Day, Mr. Walton, 
Chief Cousset and Mr. Donati pushed us to perform beyond the requirements for training, producing outstanding new officers. And I don't see that as a statement. We actually were able to ask questions and have really critical conversations with our senior leadership, which is unheard of in a lot of agencies. So I wanted to thank you for your dedication. On behalf of my colleagues, I'd also like to thank the training staff at Fletsy Sheltonham, who gave us the tools we needed to succeed at Fletsy Glencoe and refined our skills when we've returned. The second component is service. People who are drawn to public service embody the words of Nathan Hale, the revolutionary who, as he was about to be hanged by the British in September 1776, said, I only regret that I have but one life to give for my country. What an extraordinary thing to say, and especially at the time, to say that you regret that you only have one life to give for your country. In fact, recruiting is like finding a needle in the haystack, and a great officer begins with great recruiting. So thank you to the recruiting and training staff for their dedication to finding those who have what it takes to protect those who protect our nation. And furthermore, the people who make their way into law enforcement are courageous because their families raised them to be. They love their country and they serve their country because their families raised them to love their country. The traits I mentioned are not ones we are born with. In fact, each one of our character traits are given to us by those um, sitting in the crowd and by those around us. The people looking back at you, oh, if the officers in the crowd could turn their heads a little bit and just look behind you. <laughs> The people looking back at you got you here from the moment they first met you until you put on this uniform. Please join me in thanking them with a round of applause. The third component is to encourage each other. My dad taught me that in the workplace I should extend implicit trust to my colleagues. He calls it the bucket of trust. Now, it's not an actual bucket, that would be weird. You don't just give buckets to people that you meet. But <laughs> it's a metaphorical bucket. So when you meet new colleagues, or if you meet new people, you give them a metaphorical bucket of trust and respect. And what people do with that trust and respect is entirely their decision. Our ability to succeed as a class directly reflects the dedication of individuals like Luke Selvage, who led us with courage and positivity, no matter the challenge. Luke. I want to thank you for being an incredible leader. I want to thank you for having the good conversations with us, the hard conversations with us, giving us the good news and the bad news, leading us and guiding us and protecting us throughout our training experience. You're an incredible officer, an incredible leader, and a really good friend. Now, each and every one of us brought different backgrounds, languages, experience and we pushed each other to grow and each milestone was a challenge but we encouraged each other at every step the last component i'll leave you with is less tangible but vitally necessary and sometimes extremely difficult it's integrity and moral courage which our society needs today more than ever and to me it's best captured in the scripture of the book of john then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free be truthful and have moral courage in every situation. Have the courage to be honest and actually speak the truth when others lie. Hold others accountable to the same standard because when people are having their worst day, when they're most afraid, when they don't know what the answer is and they're looking to you for leadership, you're going to have to have that moral courage to stand up and say what the right answer is, what the right answer to their questions are, what to do when they're stuck. Now. To everybody in the crowd, it may be difficult in the moment to practice integrity and moral courage, but it, it makes you stronger and it makes you well respected. I hope your graduates inspire you as they have inspired me. Thank you for the extraordinary honor of speaking on behalf of class 2416. Thank you, Officer Branos, and congratulations once again.
The Pagan Police Officers' Creed will now be recited by Officer Danielle Hernandez. I am a Pentagon police officer. I hold allegiance to my country, devotion to duty, and personal integrity above all. I will wear my badge of authority with dignity and restraint. I will promote by example high standards of conduct, appearance, courtesy, and performance. I will perform my duties in a firm, courteous and impartial manner, irrespective of, of a person's color, race, religion, national origin, or gender. I have sworn an oath to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States, and it is my duty to protect and serve the employees of the Department of Defense and all within my area of responsibility. And by these concepts, I will be strong a true servant and guardian of the law. Thank you. Okay. Now we're finally to where we want to be. We're actually going to start giving credentials out to our new police officers. This is the best time of this entire ceremony. My leadership will agree with me. So once again, when your guys or your gals are up here on stage, I want to hear hooting and hollering. I want to hear it. I want to see children run them down the hallways, okay? That's why we're here. So officially, at this time, we will now present the credentials to our new officers. Graduates, please. Take your places. <laughs> Mr. Bargery and Chief Cusay, will you please join me on stage for the honors? Officer Mina Brenos. <laughs> Officer Brenos hails from Ashburn, Virginia. She holds a Bachelor's of Science degree in Intelligence and Security Studies from the Citadel, the Military College of South Carolina. Prior to joining PFPA, she worked as a logistics specialist in the Port of Tampa, Florida. Officer Brenos earned the Fletzy Expert Sharpshooter Award, the Fletzy Talk Top Academic Award, and, as a reminder, she is the Director's Award recipient. <laughs> Officer Henry Arzaz. Officer Arzaz hails from Seattle, Washington, where he holds a Bachelor's of Science degree in psychology from George Mason University. Prior to joining PFPA, he worked two years for the Transportation Security Administration as a security training instructor. Officer David Brooke. <laughs> Officer Brooke hails from Waynesboro, Pennsylvania, and he brings over four years' experience in corrections and physical security. Prior to joining PFPA, he served two years as a police officer for the Department of Army at Letterkenny Army Depot. Officer Jonah Carver. <laughs> Officer, Jonah Carver. 
Officer Carver hails from Merritt Island, Florida, where he holds a master's and bachelor's of science degree in criminal justice from the University of Central Florida. Prior to joining the Pentagon Force Protection Agency, he worked at the Kennedy Space Center conducting physical security. <laughs> Officer Matthew Chrisman. Officer Chrisman hails from Greencastle, Pennsylvania, and prior to joining the Pentagon Force Protection Agency, he served eight years in the United States Army, achieving the rank of Sergeant in the 18th Airborne Corps. <laughs> Officer Ryan Paul De Los Reyes. Officer De Los Reyes hails from Norfolk, Virginia, and he, and he holds a Master's of Arts degree in psychology from American Military University and a Bachelor of Arts degree from Virginia Westland University. Prior to joining PFPA, he served eight years in the United States Marine Corps as an amphibious assault vehicle crew member where he rose to the rank of sergeant. He earned the Fletzy Expert Sharpshooter Award. <laughs> Officer Nazir Elshire. Officer Nazar Elshire hails from Gainesville, Virginia, where he holds an associate's degree in criminal justice from Northern Virginia Community College. Prior to joining PFPA, he worked five years as an armed physical security specialist for Paragon Systems. He also brings five years of military service from the Virginia National Guard, where he currently serves as a specialist in their infantry. Officer Ryan Entenberg. <laughs> Officer Entenberg hails from Sel Selbyville, Delaware, where he holds a Master's and Bachelor's of Arts degree in criminal justice from the Indiana University of Pennsylvania. Prior to joining the Pentagon Force Protection Agency, he worked in the service industry in Ocean City, Maryland. Officer Robert Haas. <laughs> Officer Haas hails from Cleveland, Ohio, where he holds a bachelor's degree in criminal justice and a minor in terrorism from Tiffin University, Tiffin, Ohio. Prior to joining the Pentagon Force Protection Agency, he was a heavy equipment operator. Officer Christopher Hessen. <laughs> Officer Hessen hails from Point Pleasant, West Virginia, where he holds a Bachelor's of Science degree in National Security and Intelligence from Fairmont State University, Fairmont, West Virginia. Prior to joining PFPA, he worked five years as an emergency service dispatcher for Mason County, West Virginia. Officer Hessen earned the Fletzy Expert Sharpshooter Award. Officer Mark Hicks. <laughs> Officer Hicks hails from Lancaster, California, and he is studying toward his bachelor's degree in 
kinesiology through the New Mexico Highlands University. Prior to joining the Pentagon Force Protection Agency, he served two years with the Department of Air Force Civilian Police at Edwards Air Force Base in California. Officer Inamdi Ikem. <laughs> Officer Ikem hails from <laughs> Bean State, Nigeria. He, he is working toward his degree in science from the Northern Virginia Community College. He is currently serving in the United States Army Reserve and holds the rank of private. Prior to joining the Pentagon Force Protection Agency, he worked as an elementary school math tutor. <laughs> Officer David Jenke. Officer Jenke hails from Rocky River, Ohio, and he holds a Bachelor's of Science degree in Crime and Justice from Wright State University in Dayton, Ohio. Prior to joining the Pentagon Force Protection Agency, he worked for several years doing physical security. Officer Thomas Jervis. <laughs> Officer Jervis hails from Linden, Virginia, where he holds a Bachelor of Science degree in Criminal Justice from Radford University, Virginia. Prior to joining PFPA, he worked for Harris Teeter. Officer William Klinger, Jr. <laughs> Officer Klinger, Jr. hails from Frackville, Pennsylvania, where he holds a Bachelor's of Science degree in Criminology from Albright College in Reading, Pennsylvania. Prior to joining the PFPA, he served seven years as a correction officer for the Schuylkill County Prison, where he rose to the rank of lieutenant. Officer Zachary Lordarello. <laughs> Officer Lordarello hails from Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, where he holds an associate's degree in general studies from Ozark Technical Community College. Prior to joining the Pentagon Force Protection Agency, he served two years as a United States Naval Civil Police Officer at the Naval Support Activity, Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. Officer Zenas Lee. <laughs> Officer Lee hails from Edison, New Jersey, where he holds a Bachelor's of Science degree in Criminal Justice from Rutgers University, New Brunswick, New Jersey. Prior to joining the Pentagon Force Protection Agency, Officer Lee served three years with the Princeton University Police Department as a police officer. Officer Kenneth McLaughlin. Woo! 
Officer McLaughlin hails from Morgantown, North Carolina, where he holds a Master's of Science degree in National Security and a Bachelor's of Science degree in Political Science from East Carolina University, Greenville, North Carolina. Prior to joining PFPA, he worked three years in fiscal security for the Delton Protection Agency. Officer McLaughlin received the Fletzy Expert Sharpshooter Award. Officer Hin Win. <laughs> Officer Win hails from Vietnam, and where he holds an associate's degree in criminal justice from Park University. He brings to the agency three years of military service from the United States Army, where he served in the combat engineers and rose to the rank of specialist. Officer Wayne Poole. Yeah! Officer Poole hails from Westminster, Maryland. And prior to joining the Pentagon Force Protection Agency, he worked two years for the Carroll County Correctional Facility. Officer Poole also brings to the agency four years of military experience from the United States Army Reserve, where he served with distinction in their military police. Officer Tamara Rhodes. <laughs> Officer Rhodes hails from Alexandria, Virginia. She holds a Bachelor of Science degree in Sociology from Norfolk State University and a Theology Master's in Divinity from Union University. Prior to joining PFPA, she worked as a security director for Allied Universal. Additionally, she served eight years with the United States Air Force Reserves as an aerial porter and rose to the rank of senior airman. Officer Ever Revis. <laughs> Officer Revis hails from Martinsburg, West Virginia. And prior to joining PFPA, he served four years as a police officer with the Veterans Affairs Police Department, Martinsburg, West Virginia. The officer also brings to the agency eight years of military experience from the West Virginia Air National Guard, where he served distinction in security forces and the traffic management operations. Officer Andre Ruth. Officer Ruth hails from I, I can't compete with that. <laughs> Officer Ruth hails from Bristow, Virginia. Prior to joining the Pentagon Force Protection Agency, he worked three years with the security firm as a sergeant performing physical security at the Defense, Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency.
Officer Kyle Raplinski. <laughs> Officer Raplinski hails from Kenosha, Wisconsin, where he holds a Bachelor's of Science degree in Business Administration from West Webster University in Missouri. He brings to the agency five years of military experience from the United States Marine Corps, where he served with distinction in the infantry and civil affairs. Officer Raplinski earned the Fletzis, excuse me, Fletzi Fitness Award and the Expert Sharpshooter Award. Officer Luke Selvage. <laughs> Officer Selvage hails from Knoxville, Tennessee. He is currently working toward his degree in Homeland Security from Montgomery College, Maryland. He brings to the agency five years of military service from the United States Navy, where he served as a Master at Arms. Officer Selvage earned the Fletzi's Director Leadership Award. Officer Joseph Shelton. <laughs> Officer Shelton hails from Long Island, New York. He, he holds an associate's degree in general studies from American Military University. He also brings to the agency five years of military service from the United States Marine Corps as a corporal in the infantry and the Marine Embassy Security Group. <laughs> Officer Ramon Solomon. Officer Solomon hails from Lake Ridge, Virginia, where he holds an associate's degree in biochemistry from Northern Virginia Community College. Prior to joining PFPA, he worked two years for the Transportation Security Administration as a transportation security officer. Officer Solomon earned the Fletzi Expert Sharpshooter Award. One more congratulations to all. Thank you, Mr. Bardry, Chief Boucher. Recruiting and preparing these men and women for the mission of protecting those who protect our nation is not a task to be taken lightly. I now invite all our recruiters and trainers to stand and be recognized. Thank you for your commitment to produce this outstanding class of officers. They're the direct result of your de dedication and efforts. And at this time, I would like to say from PFPA, we want to send a warm greeting out to Ms. Miriam Spain of the Training Division. She was unable to be with us here today. But Ms. Spain, we have you in our thoughts, and we wish you a get well soon. <laughs> Although this agency was officially established in 2002, it is built upon a very long and firm foundation of the Department of Defense traditions. For this reason, we have chosen to recognize those who have helped support and defend that foundation. With us today, we have family members and guests 
who have served in either the military or law enforcement or both. We now invite all audience members who are military or law enforcement veterans to stand and be recognized. Officers, take your positions for the Chief's address and the oath of office. Chief Cousset, floor is yours. Class, are you ready to protect those who protect our nation? Yes, yes sir. sir. You're going to do it with the same enthusiasm as the audience? Yes, yes, sir. In all seriousness, congratulations. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I state your name. Do you solemnly swear? Do you solemnly swear? That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. I take this obligation freely. I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully discharge. And I will well and faithfully discharge. The duties of the office. The duties of the office. On which I'm about to enter. On which I'm about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Officers, congratulations. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor and my pleasure to introduce our newest Pentagon Police Officers. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing. This concludes our ceremony. I'm gonna ask you, remain standing for the departure of our official party and followed by our new Pentagon police officers who will be lining up in the back hall back here. They were going to have their handshakes and they'll be made available to you for pictures up here on the stage. The flags will remain behind, okay? Chief, take charge of your troops.